Yeah, you, you, you're right. And that's what we call the need analysis, which the educators has to do um, in advance, of course, with, yeah. with the company. The, all those Complete, completely questions. Agree. Because my, our experience being having done this in companies for all these years is that I don't think, or maybe I'm wrong, you have to arrest me if I am, but I don't think we have had one company coming to us saying, uh, help us increase creativity in our company. <laughs> no. no. I guess so. But they want <laughs> to increase their income. They want to be more efficient. They want to have better teams. They want to be better leaders. They want to innovate. Yeah, all those things. And then we say, then you need to be more creative. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> Right. So, yeah. and then say, no, 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 don't, don't, we don't want any of those. We don't want any artistic things happening. Uh, don't, don't do any exercises with us. We, we just want to, you know, we don't be good do at. But, but why do they ask you? Because I know already you are a kind of artist and cultural background. Mm, usually they don't we don't get so many people going to cult club to ask us actually they ask us as people mm -hmm. uh, and they do know we have artistic backgrounds but they also know that Johan Einler has built a company from scratch uh, he knows that I have been business advisor for so many years and project manager and uh, daily manager for small businesses so the the theater background for me and his uh, literature, storytelling, uh, teacher background is more a surprise, I think, for a lot of people than it is what they're asking for. As artists and, uh, you know, uh, having some expertise in trainings, uh, do you think, do you think, first of all, artists uh, must be like kind of a, a special trainer to teach creativity in working companies? Uh, I think that uh, you always uh, will be better at what you practice. Uh, so uh, if you are uh, talented in running 100 meters or you are talented in running a marathon, you can always improve yourself. And I think that um, uh, artists that want to help other people or companies, uh, of course, they need to train themselves in order to be at their best performing and helping others. So, uh, Yes, they need to. They, they need to have a conscious about what they want, why they want it, how they want to do it, and uh, how, how, what, how, how the things they do work to other people. <coughs> many many artists are um, uh, become artists because they want to create something, and are uh, by that very introspective. Uh, in order to teach other people, they also need to find their extra, uh, extra, uh, extra version, uh, extra version of, of themselves, um, and let other people's uh, um, creativity or, or creating creative ability be in the center. But then it's also very fulfilling for the for the teacher or the trainer, because uh, he will create uh, through other people. In the terms of your words, what, what do you think um, as uh, pedagogical approaches? For example, you are hired in a company to uh, tr try to help their employees or their uh, manager's team to improve their creativity. 
Uh, what would be your pedagogical approach in this case to attract um, or to make employees believe your uh, belief or be convinced in your beliefs that they can uh, improve and increase their creativity? What pedagogical approach or pedagogical um, workflow you would apply in this training? What do you think? Yeah, it's. That is kind of you have to first you have to 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 the, the managers has to be convinced that you're able to do that mm -hmm. because I think uh, creative creativity uh, comes from two parts one is um, by input and but then it has to become an output from each person and in order to be able to produce output you need time and space and uh, and it's not very easy to understand that before you can be more creative you need to be not creative at all you need uh, you need the space you need the time around you and that's hard because then you are not <laughs> it seems like you're not uh, um, producing yeah yeah in, in cult lab we we have this ground value that you, what you experience bodily, like with your body, uh, it will, uh, it will stay there as an experience, and and it doesn't have to change you, but it may uh, uh, confirm something. It may also change you, but it will. It's an experience that stay with you, uh, as if. If you're on a lecture and someone is telling you and, and and sharing knowledge with you, something happens with you, obviously, because you have uh, someone may be a very good uh, speaker and and it and you get a lot of knowledge and it does something to you. But in in the moment you stand up from your chair and you start walking the words in a way, or you start doing exercises uh, as we do because we we do physical exercises with them it sounds uh, it's not like a gym but it's like we do little things um, and then we reflect on that we what we we facilitate a lot of reflection what happened now what how was what did you feel what did you see what did you hear what you know what was your experience how, can you use this for something can you um, is, was this useful or was it just strange or okay if it was strange why was it strange so we are doing all this facilitation but in the in the ground it's this um, we always build on uh, trust and safety like you have to build this this climate of uh, trust in a room uh, and that is what you and I know is talking about. You have to have the trust and you have to have the time and you have to have the space. And then we start being creative because that's what happens. Like, you know, this, if you are in a big discussions or if you have, if you're listening to something or you're really busy at work and you go to the toilet and you sit down and then, you, wow, yes, that's exactly right. That's what, one I is talking about it's time and space and it, then toilet is not a big space but it's your space and 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 we all have that experience how we get this light bulb because we go to the toilet and we, or we remember things that we should remember because we're giving ourselves time and space so that's what we facilitate and and we can do that if we are dancers or or storytellers or musicians because we know that the pauses are as important as you know the next tone or the next step or the next uh word you know because if you have a pause what comes after always is given more importance right Be because we all listen so the pause is as important as what's come next and and we in a busy world the way we are now with all these you know screens and you know things coming in from all you know we're multitasking everybody all the time 
I think that's the most important that artists can do is to facilitate that, the time and the space. I think that was well said, Joanna.